for joining us today on Around the Peninsula. I'm Maria Soreo, and joining me in studio is my good friend, the president and CEO of the Palos Verdes Peninsula Chamber of Commerce, Ms. Eileen Hupp. Eileen, it's been too long, but we're glad that you're here now. Thank you for having me, Maria. Absolutely. Now, I know there is so much going mm -hmm. on on the peninsula, around the peninsula, mm -hmm. and with the chamber. So let's dive right in because you are bringing a very special fall festival and carnival, mm -hmm. and we've never had that before because we always do the big street fair, but mm -hmm. this year we did have a, mm -hmm. a was it a spring? It was in June. We it was had, in June. We had the open yes. air marketplace and That's carnival. Right. Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. And it was mm -hmm. smaller than the regular street fair, but mm -hmm. we still had a carnival and it was so much fun. Mm -hmm. And now we have a fall one, which is just in time for the holiday. So please tell us all about it. Oh, yes. So absolutely. Exciting. So, well, we are really excited about our fall festival and carnival this year, which will be on October 29th to the 31st. Okay. And we really, um, the idea for doing this event came really from the community because we got such positive response. You were there mm -hmm. um, at the event. We we did in June, which we did right after, um, the, it was the weekend right after when Governor Newsom had reopened the state. That's and right. people were just so happy to be out and about seeing friends, seeing neighbors, just yes. having an opportunity to shop safely outdoors. I had families coming up to me and thanking me for doing the carnival for the kids. I mean, the kids just had a great time. So. We thought, why wait till next June when we will, of course, do our traditional street huge fair. street fair? Right. Why not do something in the fall? And so um, we're we've taken our you know kind of our our June concept and expanded it to include some new things that yes. uh, that we're very excited about. Yeah. And uh, looking forward to that. What mm -hmm. I really enjoyed too mm -hmm. is that you include so many local businesses mm -hmm. in a local business section. Will you be doing that again? Or Absolutely. Well, okay. we won't have a separate section for them. We're mixing them in oh, with good. everybody. But we have a lot of our local businesses. Great. You know, Osteo Strong, some of our um, nonprofits like the San Pedro Peninsula Y, um, the you know the Karate Academy, etc. That will be, but we're putting them all in one area together. That's mm -hmm. a, uh, that's awesome. And mm -hmm. then we are having music back. Yes, that yes. is exciting. Tell us about I know. that. We are so excited about that because, of course, that was a little bit tricky to pull off in June because we didn't really know what the health protocols would be. So this time, and we're really excited because what we're doing this time is a first ever, we're going to have a band on Friday night. That is going to be so much fun. I know. So it will be from 7 to 9 on Friday night. We will have some chairs, but we are encouraging people to bring your own lawn chair. Okay. Um, and we'll have music and we'll have some beer and wine and um, some food, but we really want to encourage people to patronize our local restaurants. Um, we have um, a group composed of three local musicians, Mark Fischette, Donna Butler, and David Chura, who will be doing rock and R&B music. And uh, yes, you are absolutely encouraged to dance. Yes, absolutely. Th that is going to be so mm -hmm. much fun. Now, it's going to be Halloween weekend. Mm -hmm. Are people allowed to dress up? Could they dress up? You could absolutely dress up. And we're actually going to have a costume contest I on Saturday that. for great. the kids. It'll okay. be for kids from pre-K through fifth grade. Okay. It'll be at 12 noon on the main stage. Great. And uh, we'll have a, a pre-K group, a kindergarten group, a first and second grade group, and a third through fifth grade group. Um, and just a fun time for the kids to come in their costumes. Uh, maybe they'll win some carnival tickets and some other other fun prizes, so we're looking forward to that. And I know the carnival is such a big hit, mm -hmm. and you managed to do it safely. How do you pull this off safely, even though COVID is getting better, but mm -hmm. we're still kind of in the, in yeah. the you know. Well, yeah, interestingly, you know, obviously for the whole event, we're going to follow whatever the current health protocols are required by the county, you know, on those dates. But amusement parks were allowed back even in 2020. And so they are still allowed and there are specific health protocols for amusement parks and that what we will that's what we will be following as well as for the entire event. Okay. So um, the carnival will be open on Friday at four o'clock from four to 10 and then all day Saturday and all day Sunday. And this is going to be on the promenade in the peninsula location, is that right? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. and you know, it's, I mean, it's mm -hmm. just so exciting to see people, like you were talking about, getting back together mm -hmm. again. You'll have some vendors there, obviously, where they can sell things because mm -hmm. it's fall. Mm -hmm. Do your holiday shopping a little early. Exactly. We're expecting between 40 and 50 vendors, which Great. is the perfect amount for yes. the size of space that we have. Mm -hmm. And I have to say, we are so grateful to the promenade in the peninsula for opening up their property to us. They're really community partners in this and we gratefully appreciate their you know their willingness to, to host this event for us um, so we will have about 40 to 50 vendors we have everything from activities for kids like rolling robots and you know karate lessons and things like that we have gifts of all kinds toys 
clothes for women, um, you know, jewelry, of course, right, yes, Maria? We love absolutely. the jewelry vendors. Um, some of our local nonprofits, such as the San Pedro Peninsula Y, um, just a really good, and then the things for your home, you know, Cutco, the water services, the alarm services, pretty much anything you could possibly need or want. That is, I mean, that's just amazing. And now I know you mentioned that you want to encourage people to go to local restaurants, but we yes. do have fair food, yes? Yes, absolutely, okay, yes, some, of course, Eileen. yes, Maria. The, the deep fried Oreos or okay, funnel good. cake will be in for that. <laughs> Great. Um, and we will have our, our, that wonderful ice cream truck is coming back that we had in June. Wonderful. Okay, so much fun, love that ice cream. Um, and we will have some other food vendors as well. Um, and the beer and wine. And then of course, we'll have a list of our local restaurants because Good. again, we want to really push that business to our local restaurants. Um, the local restaurants were telling us in June, they had more business than they could handle. I mean, they were just, they were overwhelmed, which is kind of a good problem. It's a we're great really problem, happy about yes. that. And we're encouraging them to do like a grab and go kind of fair special. Great, so, and yeah. then where mm -hmm. can people park? They can park in the parking garage at the Promenade of the Peninsula. They are Great. welcome to park there, um, preferably second, third, and fourth level rather than the first level. We'd okay. like to keep that first level open for the patrons of the stores in the Promenade, of course. Um, and then any of the, um, you know, legal street parking, of course. And on Saturday the 30th, another component of the Fall Festival will be a health and wellness fair. Um, where we'll be having some speakers and special chamber member exhibits um, in the health and wellness space. And, and what will that include? So it will include uh, various speakers for free, you know, on topics like nutrition and exercise and health care, things like that, and then some exhibits um, from our health and wellness businesses. Which I think mm -hmm. is really important because people mm -hmm. always want to stop by booths. They want mm -hmm. to talk and engage with people. Mm -hmm. And what's better than your own health and welfare and your fitness? Exactly, yes. Especially mm -hmm. since we've been in our home Mm -hmm. homes for so long mm -hmm. if people want to get back out a little bit again mm -hmm. and so that's going to be that's a, that's a great idea it's going to be really fun so a yeah and we're, we're trying to see if we can start the day with uh, maybe some kind of a yoga or exercise class for free so check the website for more information now what time does the fair open um so on Saturday, the vendors, Saturday and Sunday, the vendors will be there from 10 to 6, and the carnival will start at 11. How did you manage to pull this off in such a short time, Eileen? You, she <laughs> does the I impossible no, we have. I've got an amazing staff at the chamber, and we have great volunteers, a great board of directors and great volunteers, and a very hardworking committee putting this together. Well, I think you're going to have a huge success, and you might just have to do this again next year. I'm in. I I'm in. right. Yeah, I know the so costume much contest. Like, yeah, so fun. That's going to mm -hmm. be great. Okay, now I think I think that older people are going to want to enter that costume contest, Eileen. Mm -hmm. So you might have to up that age a little bit, but you know, yeah. we'll see. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, no, absolutely. Now, absolutely. tell us mm -hmm. um, some other really exciting things going on at the chamber because mm -hmm. you're really up and running, mm -hmm. and I know you're still doing a lot of virtual stuff, but you're doing a lot of in-person stuff now, mm -hmm. and I'm so excited because one of the events that we've been mm -hmm. waiting to for mm -hmm. waiting for for what 22 months now mm -hmm. is Salute to Business and Citizen of the Year. So mm -hmm. please tell us more about these. Yeah, absolutely. So sneak peek, sneak um, but it's coming absolutely. up quickly. Coming yes, up quickly. It is. So we are so excited. On Thursday, November 18th, we will be um, having a luncheon at Trump National Golf Club. It is a combination of our very prestigious and um, highly acclaimed Salute to Business and Citizen of the Year event. And what is so amazing, Maria, is this, as you mentioned, will be the first time in 22 months that we are having a large chamber-wide event. The last time the entire mm -hmm. chamber was together was in January of 2020 when we did our economic forecast breakfast sold out at Terranea. Wow. Um, so we are very excited about this. Our theme this year is We Are Community, and we are going to be honoring outstanding businesses, nonprofits, Citizen of the Year, as well as um, a special celebration of the resilience and creativity of our businesses and our community. Um, our businesses and community came together, as you know, in yes. ways that no one could have even anticipated 22 months ago. And so we're going to be doing some special things to honor really everyone. And, and mm -hmm. really, that was really such a difficult time for businesses. Mm -hmm. And you mm -hmm. went above and beyond to mm -hmm. really help the local businesses out to keep their doors open mm -hmm. and found creative ways for them to do things so that the community would feel more comfortable. So this exactly. has been a labor mm -hmm. of love for yeah. you. No, absolutely. We are so excited about it. And we had businesses which 
who pivoted completely and changed their business models. We had businesses who had to adapt to mm -hmm. ever-changing rules and guidelines as to what to do. Right. And then we had a number of new businesses that started up um, and some businesses that had their best year ever. So that's great. there's so many different aspects to it and that's what we really want to shine a light on. Now, mm -hmm. now that you're going to have an in-person event, is there social distancing? How does that work now? How are we get, getting kind of back to normal at an event like Absolutely. that? Absolutely. So again, like all of our chamber events, we will be following the current LA County health protocols. Right now, for an indoor event under 1,000 people, we fall into that category, and so we will be following those protocols, which are you'll wear a mask except when you're seated at your table and actively eating or drinking. Okay, yeah. because you do so, invite the community to come out to these events. Yes. And where can they get tickets? How can um, they? Tickets can be purchased right now. They're on sale already on our website. Okay. Um, you can get information about that, and you can get also any up-to-date information on the Fall Festival in terms of um, you know, schedule for the different groups that are going to be performing, the bands, you know, the costume contest details, things like that. And the website is? Um, palacefordieschamber.com. Okay, that's where all the information is. Now, I know. you have mm -hmm. um, a very special mm -hmm. Citizen of the Year this year, mm -hmm. and you are going to tell us a little bit about that and something everyone's going to want to know about. For I sure. know. So we couldn't be more excited to announce, this is sort of breaking news here, yes, Maria. It is, it is right breaking here news. on RPV TV. Um, you bet. Um, our citizens of the year this year will be our first responders. Amazing. Amazing. So we will be having representatives from our four local hospitals, um, as you know, from the representing the medical community. We will have representatives from the LA County Sheriff's Department, the City of Palos Verdes Estates Police Department, LA County Fire and LA County paramedics. Um, so there will be one person from each of those groups um, representing all of their colleagues. Okay, so for example, we have a nurse who is uh, the supervising nurse for the overnight shift at the emergency room at Torrance Memorial Medical Center. And she will be representing all of her colleagues at Torrance Memorial and talking about how what they did and how they came together um, and are still coming together you know, to provide, you know, critical care to um, the community during these past 22 months. So, and the same with, you know, Little Company of Mary and Kaiser Permanente, as well as, you know, the fire and the sheriff and the PVE police. We're so excited. So excited. Mm -hmm. And I know mm -hmm. we're going to have the opportunity to talk mm -hmm. to them. Mm -hmm. What has the response been like so far? I, I, I can only imagine. Okay. Everybody that I mention it to, their faces just light up. Yes. Their faces light up because... You know, pandemic notwithstanding, um, you know, if you've lived in this community as we, you know, we all do, yeah. um, over the years, whether it's the paramedics, the fire, the PVE police, the sheriff, our local hospitals, they've all probably come to our rescue in one way or another. Very true. And, um, you know, they're all, and we just, so it's important to thank them regardless. But right. clearly what they have endured over the last 22 months yes. is unbelievable. One of the fire captains at Fire Station 106 said to me that in her 20 plus years of serving as a member of the LA County Fire Department, this was the most difficult year she has, she or her firefighters have ever faced due to COVID, due to, you know, what in terms of just the risk that they faced going into homes, go, you know, right. whatever, um, not knowing, you know, everything they had to do there, um, the wildfires, and then, you know, after their 24-hour shifts, needing to go home and homeschool their own kids. So, Ugh. you know, just really, really challenging. So the chamber, you know, we, we're the hub of the whole community. And yes. so we can't, couldn't be more excited to bring the whole community together to honor these first responders as well as all of our businesses. And that's why we really do want to invite the community Absolutely. and encourage the community to come join us at Trump National because... I just want to blow the roof off on what our community has done, how we've come together over this past year. You know, and it's really amazing when you think about mm -hmm. the stories of, of somebody who is a first responder, mm -hmm. like you said, yeah. they're all day, they're working tirelessly to help mm -hmm. other people yeah. with their own, mm -hmm. having to think about themselves too exactly. and their own safety, mm -hmm. but they just go out and do it anyway. Exactly, exactly. And we've all heard the stories of, you know, initially they would go home, they would, you know, some of them sleeping in their garages because they didn't yes. want to. I mean, just unbelievable what these first responders did and continue to do. I have so, to ask, yeah. how mm -hmm. did you come up with this idea? Was it just something okay. organic over time? or So it was organic 
Last summer, I came up with the idea. Okay. okay, last summer, I came up with the idea. It's amazing. Because I, mean. I thought we were going to be having the event last November, yeah, as we course. normally would, right? And yes. then we all saw that that didn't happen, and so kept the idea under wraps. We have a, um, a committee uh, that looks at nominations that come in, you know, so we looked at nominations that came in. They really liked the first responder idea. We brought it to our board of directors, and that that solidified it. I mean, it was hands down first responders. Yeah, it's it's amazing. Yeah. So make mm -hmm. sure that November 18th, lunch at Trump National, you mm -hmm. are going to want to be there for mm -hmm. sure. You know, something else I wanted to touch upon, you've been so connected to the local businesses through the mm -hmm. pandemic. How is everybody doing now? What kind of feedback are you hearing from the, the businesses? So you know, that's a really tough question, Maria, because clearly, um, our businesses, and I firmly believe this, and I know it because I've been out speaking to them, you know, one-on-one -on -one for whatever, however long. Right. Um, uh, they, they're first and foremost, they want to keep their employees safe and they want to keep their customers safe. So our businesses want to do the right thing. And they have stood on their heads to going back to March of last year, trying to get masks, trying to get hand sanitizer, putting up signs, knowing what to do. Right. Um, so they have been doing everything they can and they are firmly committed to that. That said, um, you know, we know that over the last 22 months, the goalposts kept changing, the rules kept changing, you're open, you're closed, you're not, you're this, whatever. Right. And I will say that in the last two months with changing rules again, mm -hmm. reinstituting mass mandates, now discussion of vaccine mandates. Businesses are confused. They right. need information. They don't understand, do I have to require my employees to be vaccinated? And if I don't, do I fire them? And if so, does that leave me open legally? And so I will say that businesses are beginning to get, they're overwhelmed, they're overloaded. and. Um, you know, they want to take things seriously and do the right thing, and the chamber is always going to encourage them to do that, but they're getting... It's difficult. It's much. It's really getting challenging and difficult for them, just speaking really honestly. And so mm -hmm. that's why, again, I just want to thank the community for continuing to support our local businesses, appreciate our local businesses, patronize our local businesses, and know that they are doing everything they can to keep our, their employees and the community safe, absolutely. And if you see a mm -hmm. sign in a window where mm -hmm. they're saying help wanted, please yes. apply yeah. for the job yes. and mm -hmm. help the community by yeah. by working mm -hmm. and, and being a part of it, right. really. Right, and that's a real, I'm so glad you brought that up, Maria, because as, as we all know, whether it's, you know, hospitality businesses, restaurants, retail stores, banks, everywhere you go, the local gym, everywhere you go, there's help wanted signs that's up. Right. So, the community needs to be understanding about that, that our businesses are trying really hard to deliver their usual outstanding standards of customer service. Absolutely. But it's really hard to do that without the adequate staffing. So it's just putting added pressure on the businesses and you know even the employees who are in some cases being asked to work overtime and extra shifts, there's only so much they can do without right. getting burned out as well. So I just implore everyone, be civil, be kind, thank our businesses, thank your, your waiter, your waitresses, the clerk in the store, the person behind the counter at pavilions, whatever that might be, because everybody, um, I believe, is trying really, really hard. Right, and we also want to encourage everybody to shop local. It's such yeah. a huge yeah. part of just keeping the economy going in mm -hmm. our community. Yes. So mm -hmm. please, like, stay on the hill whenever you can to buy something, mm -hmm. and yeah. think about that for holiday shopping as Absolutely. well. Absolutely, and I would encourage people, we're all hearing it shop early. You only have to look out at the harbor and see the ships that are backed yes. up coming in, and consider gift cards, you know, gift cards. Perfect. to local restaurants, gift cards to the, you know, maybe a donation to the PV Land Conservancy in honor of someone, maybe a gift card to the, or a, a gift from the Peninsula Friends of the Library bookstore. There's unique ways that you can support Absolutely. the community and do some creative gift giving. Um, but do it early. Yeah, and we had so yeah. much fun last year with doing that with the restaurants. Yes. Is really mm -hmm. just encouraging everybody to go out and, mm -hmm. and buy somebody lunch or give them a gift card. And yes. that mm -hmm. helped so much. Absolutely. Just a little bit goes a long way, Eileen. Absolutely, yes. Very mm -hmm. good. Well, mm -hmm. we're so mm -hmm. excited. We've got a lot going on mm -hmm. here with the chamber. Mm -hmm. And we're excited to get back out to the, it's the, the fall festival and carnival. That will be, again, 
October 29th, 30th, and 31st. So get your costume on, go out to the promenade on the peninsula and have some fun. And then the Salute to Business and Citizen of the Year on November 18th. Get your tickets early for that lunch at Trump National. Eileen, I cannot thank you enough for being with us today and all of the hard work that you do in our community as well. Thank you so much for the great communications, getting all this word out to the community. Absolutely. You're amazing. Thank oh, you. thank you. All right, and mm -hmm. thank you for watching. Mm -hmm. I'm Maria Sorreo, and we'll see you next time around the peninsula. A no street fair would be complete without the Hawaiian. And this is actually a pretty blue. Love that. Aloha, Maria. Aloha.